Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to those who are in church and those who are joining us online. Uh, just some notices to draw your attention to. Our old age service uh, next Sunday, we'll be looking at the healing of a lame man. That's from Acts chapter 3, verses 1 to 26. And that's from 10 to 11 on Facebook. Uh, it's in church and online. And then later on, it'll be on YouTube in the afternoon. Uh, if you have any items for the food bank, then you can bring those either to the church or to the rectory, and we'll make sure that they get to Enniskillen. So let's stand as we have our invitation to worship. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Lord, direct our thoughts. Help us to pray and lift up our hearts to worship you in spirit and in truth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Spirit of God fills the whole world. Come, let us worship. And we begin our service by saying, God is here as we his people.
so we confess our sins to God our Father. Let us pray. And together we say, Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbor in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, by what we have done and by what we have failed to do. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And the colic for the fifth Sunday after Trinity. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose Spirit the whole body of the church is governed and sanctified. Hear our prayer which we offer for all your faithful people, that in their vocation and ministry they may serve you in holiness and truth, to the glory of your name, through our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. A reading from Acts chapter 2, beginning at verse 42. All the believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship and to sharing in meals, including the Lord's Supper and to prayer. A deep sense of awe came over them all, and the apostles performed many miraculous signs and wonders. And all the believers met together in one place and shared everything they had. They sold their property and possessions and shared the money with those in need. They worshipped together at the temple each day, met in homes for the Lord's Supper, and shared their meals with great joy and generosity, all the while praising God and enjoying the goodwill of all the people. And each day the Lord added to their fellowship those who were being saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And before the old age talk, uh, we uh, stand and we sing, Shine from the Inside Out. It's a video. be seated.
Father, I pray that you would take my lips and use them, that you'd speak through them for your name's sake and for your glory. Amen. Well, I want to imagine, uh, you to imagine that you're a farmer and you're, you've planned for today to go out and cut silage. And you go to the tractor and you find there's no fuel. And you find that there are parts missing. It's not going to function in the way that you had intended. And the work that you had intended to do, you will not be able to carry out. And we're going to look at the church in that way, in terms of how the church can function and should function in such a way that it will flourish. Because that's what we see in this passage. We see the, past, the, the church flourishing. The Lord added to their number daily those who are being saved. That is a church that was truly flourishing. And it was functioning the way a church should. And we see in this passage two particular things that are key for the church to do that. The first thing is that we need to be those who follow, who follow Jesus Christ, who follow the teachings that are laid down. Because that's what we see, isn't it? That the disciples, that we see that, I don't know if you saw it twice in this passage, we have the phrase, all the believers. Not one was missing. All the believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching. There was, they had that real commitment to growing spiritually, to following Jesus. We see later on in Acts that to follow Jesus was referred to as the way. So that those who followed Jesus were referred to as those who followed the way. And then later on, we see them referred to as Christians. In Antioch, that was the first place that they were referred to as Christians. And we see the Antioch church actually functions more the way that we are meant to function. The Jerusalem church, yes, was flourishing, but to some extent they weren't doing everything that the Lord had commanded. They were to begin in Jerusalem, but then they were to move on. They were to begin in Jerusalem and all Judea, Samaria, to the ends of the earth but we see it's only persecution that causes them to scatter and do the work of God. But they were those who were following Jesus Christ. They were those who were committed to the Bible, to the Word of God, as, as they knew it, and then later on as the letters and the Gospels were written down as we know it now. And so the first thing is we need to be those who are followers. And that's follower, not a fan. You see, there's a book called Not a Fan, and it's a challenging book for us to read because a fan mentality is one where we're looking for things to please us. A follower mentality is where we're looking for what will please the one we're following. And there's the big difference. So we come to church not to get something for ourselves necessary, but we're getting something for then giving to other people. It's that service, that attitude that we're wanting to share with other people, and we want to be those who are strengthened to do that. That's why we follow Jesus Christ. We are followers of Jesus Christ to make then other followers too. It doesn't stop with us. It shouldn't stop with us because that's the way Jesus intended so when he chose the 12 disciples, it wasn't going to end with them, but they were to make other disciples. And so we find at the beginning of Acts that there's at least 150 followers of Jesus Christ who are meeting together. We know there must be more than that because at one time, Jesus appeared to more than 500 at the same time. Followers is key. But then the next thing that we need to do is to have fellowship. You see, 
we also see in this passage that all the believers met together. And we find the word together in this passage that, uh, that the translation that we're using today, it's mentioned twice. But if you look at the NIV for 1984, three times the word together is mentioned. And it was all the believers met together. That's where there's the function of the church is at its most. If you think of following as the fuel, it's our following of Jesus Christ that gives us the fuel, like the tractor. But the fellowship is like all the parts coming together. And just like the tractor is not going to function with all the parts there, so the church cannot function unless we're all coming together. And if it's an interesting thing for you to do is if you've got an app, a Bible app, and just put in the words one and other into the search part of it. And then just go through the New Testament to see the one and other passages and to see what God is saying to us as what we're meant to be like. So you go to John 13, verse 34, that we're told to love one another. You go to Romans, and we're told in Romans 12, be devoted to one another in love. Later on in Romans, we're told, serve one another. All the one and others put together help us to know what the church should look like. We see in this passage, in Acts chapter 2, they were sharing with one another. If someone had a need, they would share what they had with someone who was in need, so that they had everything in common, is what we read in NIV. That's what the church should look like. We see the early church flourishing because they follow Jesus but they did it together in fellowship. And it's interesting looking at that word fellowship in the original language because koinonia, which is the Greek for fellowship, is the same word that's used to describe Siamese twins. It's that sense of deep, intimate connection where you can't do without each other where we're having the same blood going through us. That's the Holy Spirit. It's what's going through each one of us if we're Christians. But that shows us how connected we should be. And when we're like that, then we will flourish. So how do we do that in the midst of COVID? Well, for those who are joining us online, I want to challenge you that you do that at 11 o'clock. Don't fit your program, the God around your program, fit your program around God. Because at least if you're saying we're going to come at 11 o'clock and join if you feel that you can't come into church because of fears of the variant, then at least make a commitment to come together at the same time online as people are coming in church. But I'm sure there are those who are online who are still going out and having fellowship with other people, whether they're eating in restaurants or whatever. Sometimes we can use COVID as an excuse because it can be so e much easier, isn't it, to sit in our homes, have our cup of coffee, maybe have our pajamas still on. Do you remember uh, at the beginning of this whole thing, um, Bishop Ken sent me a thing, four things that uh, people think about online church as being better. You can sit in your pajamas, you can drink your coffee, um, you can relax. And the fourth thing, which I hope you won't do, is you can mute the pastor. But that's it, isn't it? We try and, we're trying to fit things in the wrong way. We need, need to make a commitment to sacrifice the time to come together at the same time and then to have that sense that we are a family. 
It's been difficult, hasn't it? When it comes to our earthly families, it's been difficult not being able to meet in the way that we would like. But we need to understand that we are a heavenly family. And that that heavenly family is actually meant to be of more value to us than even our earthly family. How do we know that? Because we're told that if you, that we're meant to hit our earthly family in comparison to the love that we have to have for Jesus Christ. It's not that we hit them, but the difference between our love for Jesus has to be that much more, like it's the difference between love and hate. But our earthly family is not necessarily eternal, but our heavenly family is. And that's the one we need to be more committed to than any other thing. The second thing is, I want you to meet up, either be it online if you're still committed to just doing online, or over the phone, meet up with someone online or over the phone this week that you're not related to. And have fellowship over the phone. Talk about Jesus. Talk together about how you're doing. If you're meeting up with family and friends in restaurants, then phone up someone who you're not related to. Meet up with them. Have a coffee. Chat. Let's see that fellowship is not something that we lose in these days, but something that we actually see grow. Because if you look at the fellowship that they had here, it wasn't just that they met in the temple. Look what it says. It says every day they met in the temple. We're only asking you to come once a week to the equivalent of the temple. But every day they met in the temple and in their homes. They ate meals together with glad and sincere heart, praising God. We're losing that. And because we're losing that, we're not functioning and flourishing like we should. And when we flourish in that way, then the, the, the last thing of witnessing will be even more powerful because it'll be something that we'll be wanting people to be a part of. Whereas so often we're sort of thinking, do I really want to bring someone to my church? Because it's not the way it should be. But often it's not the way it should be because each one of us are not playing our part. And so we need to play our part to make the church function and flourish the way it should. Let's pray. Father, we want to pray that you'd help us, that we would do a spiritual check of our lives, How are we following you today? Lord, would you speak to us by your Spirit? Show us, Lord, those areas where our lives are not living up to the way that you intend us to live. And Lord, would you show us where we are in terms of fellowship? And show us, Lord, individually as well as corporately how we can do that better. That we would not give up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing. But as your word says, that we would encourage one another and all the more as we see the day approaching. And it would be all for your glory alone. Amen. We sing, Brother, Sister, Let Me Serve You.
remain standing and we affirm our faith. To believe and trust in God the Father. I believe and trust in God the Father who made the world. To believe and trust in God the Son. I believe and trust in His Son, Jesus Christ, who redeemed mankind. To believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit. I believe and trust in the Holy Spirit who gives life to the people of God. This is the faith of the church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We'll have our prayers of intercession. Let us pray. Father, we pray for the church worldwide, that we all may be one. Grant that every member of your church may truly and humbly serve you, that your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world, that there may be justice and peace on earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake, that your glory may be proclaimed through our lives. We pray for those in need of your touch, and in the silence we bring them to your throne of grace, especially remembering the Keys and Pollock family. And together we say, stretch out your hand to bring healing to those who are sick, comfort for those who mourn, and hope to those in despair. Accept our prayers through Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our final hymn is hymn 303, Lord of the Church, we pray for our renewing.
So we have our closing prayers. Lord Jesus Christ, you emptied yourself, taking the form of a servant. Through your love, make us servants of one another. Lord Jesus Christ, for our sake you became poor. May our lives and gifts enrich the life of your world. And let us say together, Lord Jesus Christ, I thank you for all the benefits you have given me, for all the pains and insults you have borne for me. O most merciful Redeemer, friend and brother, may I see you more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly, day by day. Amen. And we turn to Mother and we say the grace together. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. So please be seated uh, and wait until uh, the wardens direct you to leave and Lorna is going to play us out. Thank you.